and, and apply it. So the book of Jude only has one chapter. Real nice, real nice and concise. So we go to Jude chapter 1, the only one, and verse 6. And it tells us right away what the problem was. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness into the judgment of the great day. That's one. Another one that I um, listed for you on last evening. I believe I gave you quite a bit, um, in, especially in talking about um, in talking about um, departing from the word and departing from the original scriptures, but also uh, Genesis um, Genesis three. Uh, wait, let's see. Did I get that right? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Not Genesis three. Sorry about that. Um, it's Genesis 6. Yes. Genesis 6. And you probably you probably are familiar with this story. So let's go to Genesis 6. Genesis being the first book. Uh, Genesis chapter 6. Verse 1 through 4. And I'm reading from the King James Version. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. And daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and that they took them as wives, all of which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years." There were giants in the earth in those days, and all, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Now, most scholars and a lot of translations, a lot of commentaries, uh, su suggest, imply, and right, come right out and state that these are the fallen angels. The sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. So, remembering what we read in Jude, the angels left their first estate. Another, what is a state here? Their first position, their designated position. And in this case, not only their position of authority, but also their physical position. They, they left heaven, they saw the daughters of men, and they took them as wives. Now, this was obviously forbidden. If they were, in fact, angels, that was forbidden, right? We get that from, this, uh, from just this reading that we just had. Then let's look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14. And verse 12. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Here again, we're seeing that physical leaving of, their, of his original position. Now, how did this come to pass? How did this come to pass? Well, we know what did Satan say? What did, or as he was Lucifer, what did he say? He wanted to ascend above God, take the place of God, and make himself to be the Godhead. And in that he was low, he wanted to lower God so that he could rise above him. 
And what did, how did God punish them and cast out? What? A third of the angels, right? Do you remember uh, reading that scripture? Where a third of the angels were cast out of uh, cast out of heaven and uh, you can find that uh, again and um, uh, let's see I think it's all I think it's mentioned in Revelation and I think also it's mentioned uh, in another place in Isaiah uh, if you want to do your research about that but you probably are familiar with that idea that uh, they were cast out of heaven and why were they why were they cast out first of all the very first reason is because they sinned against God by wanting to usurp God's authority uh, and Satan led them and he he convinced a third of the other angels now because we don't know how many all right say maybe it's a hundred thousand right so a third of that group about thirty three thousand went with went with who was then named Lucifer, now became Satan when he was cast out of heaven. Where was he cast out? God cast him to the earth, right? Do you recall that? Uh, that was also in that same reading uh, in text, in the scriptures. And uh, and that, that was the primary reason. Now, what, what actually set that up? Do you, do you have any idea? Have you always wondered? Because remember, God created everything, right? And he created everything good. That's what he said. The whole part of Genesis, it says he created this, he created that, and it was all good. He saw that it was good. It was all great, right? So wh how did this come about? Well, clearly, if Satan were to decide, right, that he is going to go against God, it's clear that angels have also been given a free will. They have the will to follow God or to disobey God. Because remember, God does not want worship or your love if he has to force it. So he did what? He gave us a free will. He doesn't want a bunch of robots. In fact, <laughs> you can remember as a child, right, getting that toy, right, getting that toy that was supposed to be so super fantastic, but then you had to you had to move the arms and move the legs, you know, to make it walk and move its head, right, before they became all fantastic like they are now, right? But do you remember if you recall that and how eventually you got bored with that? You 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 know, it was monotonous. It was it was uninteresting, right? So. So, so uh, God doesn't want a bunch of uh, robots. He doesn't want a bunch of people that he would have to force to love him, have to force to worship him, have to force to be in his family. I mean, who among us, right? And we've talked about this before. Who among us um, finds a great joy in forcing someone to bring them a gift? <laughs> Right? It's, 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 it's ludicrous. It takes all the joy out of it, right? When you have to beg and nag and plead and, you know, cajole and for, by the time you, you know, by the time you uh, get the, the, the thing, the pizza, the drink, it's, it's like, you know, maybe lost its savor, right? Or, or uh, you know, who, who among us, who among us would want to have to pay for a gift? Think about that. Because that's a big part, right, of the whole idea of God giving us the gift of his love and never requiring payment. But it's only when we sin or go against him that we have to try to pay for or have retribution for our sins, which is why God sent Jesus, right? And we, you know, we've, we've talked about that before. So, so yes, we don't want to have to force somebody to love us. In fact, we know that if we force somebody to love us, if we, you know, just kind of make, you know, somehow dominated them and, you know, forced them, we would always be what? Suspicious of whether they truly loved us, right? 
we would we would know in our heart of hearts that it's not genuine so would you be fulfilled no so it makes perfect sense that God made all these creations all these creations are lovely they're all doing what he intended for them to do you know the flowers grow and the grasses grow and the birds sing and the, you know the dogs bark and uh, the whales wail whatever they do you know whatever they do right and then and then people uh grow up and they love each other and they marry and they fruitful and multiply and you know all that good stuff and they worship their creator right as as it was expected and intended okay uh uh but not coerced because he gave all of us including the angels because you know you probably had an idea in your mind that the angels were like this army right that was under this um general and that 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 followed the general's orders and didn't ha and had no say in the matter but obviously for satan or lucifer to decide that he was going to raise himself up against remember we talked about anti christ anything that's anti is what opposes against or wants to take the place of christ right so he wanted to raise himself up above god become god and be ruler and have and remember when he tempted jesus right he said i would give you all of this earth all of the as far as your that i could see well how was satan able to do that how was he able to all, give that offer well first of all it really the land the earth was not his right think about it he was only banished to the earth from heaven and he was allowed to have a certain amount of dominion over the earth but he wasn't it wasn't given to him as as in uh you know his possession to to keep forever and ever he was just banished there as part of his punishment hoping i guess maybe god thinking that you know maybe he'll decide to stop fighting against me at some point of course god being god and knowing that that's not going to happen uh you know he sent him to earth to be punished forever and ever okay so now we have satan that was who went against god he was banished okay now we're what happened with adam and eve well adam and eve were in the garden have you ever looked at the description of the garden the garden of eden is just a portion of Eden and if you look at the description in the scriptures it defines for you uh, in um, and let's see where is that in Genesis 1 and and specifically 2 and around verse 8 it describes specifically and let's just go there for a moment and just quickly uh, try to see what that um, what that sounds like what it what it uh, looks like because if you can begin to see a picture of this Eden uh, where this Eden is you kind of get the idea now of where we're going into this being banished okay so God planted, uh, we're talking about Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. He, he's already formed, uh, did all the creations, and he's, uh, he's uh, formed man. He's breathed life into man, and he, now he's putting man where he wants him. So he says, and the Lord God, reading again from the King James Version, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward, eastward in Eden. No, it does not say that Eden was east, right? It says he planted man east in Eden, okay? And there he put man whom he had formed out of the ground, et cetera, et cetera. And then in verse 10, and a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from that river, it was parted into four heads or four 
other smaller rivers or four other streams. Now, if you look at a map now,